and welcome everyone to the final episode of the book of bubba fett spoiler cast is episode seven and i finally got the episode right off the bat without hesitating for a change which well done me um yeah as always i'm mitch you can follow me on twitter at 692 tweets and slightly different this week sean can't be here because we are slightly too early for california time but as always i'm joined by jared hi uh i i have finally ascended not only am i on a comic book cast episode i'm on a cbc episode talking about star wars so i am here to clown i am here to go to the mat for this show and this is the first star wars one we've done yeah yeah do mando season two no this is before like I, i mean granted armin and i had done stuff together at that point but like that was pre uh me being completely in the comic book cast fold huh i suppose yeah we started with one division didn't we yep yep wow. that was the first time i had you on the teen app yeah wow huh. yeah you can follow jared uh the nerd academy podcast yeah. and all the good yeah places. nerd academy podcast uh twitter instagram youtube wherever you listen to podcasts Come listen to my stuff because it's great, and we have gr- amazing Star Wars takes. Except for sometimes when Spencer says some stupid stuff about the armor, but I have great Star Wars takes. So come listen to oh, my amazing Star Wars takes. Oh, I thought you were going to say takes. about it, it was Spencer who said the uh, Tarkin's the bar for CGIing actors, right? Yeah. Yeah, I am. Um, you know, it's 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 okay to be wrong in 2022. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't I don't know Spencer. I've never spoken to Spencer, but it's it's okay to be wrong. Um Yeah, that was one I don't completely agree with. I get what he's <laughs> I understand what he's getting at with that. Yeah, I I, I got that as well. But I, like, I, oh, no. I yeah. <laughs> well, I say uh, no. When Tarkin's in the window in Rogue One, it's like, oh my god, that's fantastic. And then the camera pans around, you're like, oh no, it's horrendous. <laughs> What you I, yeah, I don't think it's bad. I don't think tar- uh, Rogue One Tarkin is bad. I think that um I, I do think that the bar is uh, very much set at uh, what we saw from Luke Skywalker <laughs> in this episode, uh, in this season, uh, the Book of Boba Fett. Uh, that was terrifyingly good, and I, it 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 has perturbed me since that it's just like, oh, they just went back in time and pulled Mark Hamill through a time machine, and this is terrifying. See. I don't think he looks as much like Mark Hamill as they want us to believe. You don't think so? No. Because, well, I, I assume they use the same, like, stand-in they used for Mandalorian in season two. Different actor this time, actually. Oh, is it a different actor? Because huh. yeah. I was going to say, the, the stand-in for the Mando finale, it looks like they've just CGI'd the dots off his face. And then in here, it's like, well, it, it looks a little bit better. It's not, like, I, I don't know, I, something about, it might be the, the text-to-speech crap that's throwing me off everything and my brain's refusing to actually acknowledge that it's Mark Hamill. But. Yeah, the voice still needs work. Yeah. I think that, I think soon they need to recognize that, like, the text-to-speech is just never going to quite work as well as you want it to. Yeah. It worked really well in uh, Mandalorian Season 2. For but like didn't the Mark Hamill amount. do lines for that. He did not. He did not record oh. a single line of dialogue. Huh. Um, I've been now, living a lie for a year. <laughs> he did not record a single line of dialogue for that scene. What I think they should do is I think they should pull the trigger and just have uh, either Mark Thompson, uh, who has who does a very good Luke Skywalker for audiobooks, uh, or the gentleman who plays Luke in Battlefront Two. I think they should have one of those two. Just give us a voice. You need to do it. If we can lose uh, Ashley Eckstein's voice uh, to have Rosario Dawson actually voice Ahsoka, I think you can do the same thing here and just in reverse. You already have harvested Mark Hamill's face from 40 friggin' years ago. Just have someone else do his voice. See, I'm in the camp, and we're going to jump around with this in this show. There's no clue clean structure as people would know this and see this i am fully me, me and sean were talking about this last week i am absolutely on the side of i do not want this 
you give you recast these actors and give me performers. I I don't want Robo, Luke or Han or Leia or whatever. If you're gonna do it, you recast. I am I'm somewhat in the middle of that. I think in certain instances it is advantageous to do what they've done. You know, I think that at, at the end of the day, <coughs> pardon me. Uh, there's, it, I'm not opposed to a recast of Luke or Han or Leia or anyone. Uh, however, since they do have this technology, I think that what they need to do is use it sparingly. You know, I do not want an entire Luke Skywalker TV show. I've seen no, people talk no. about that and. Having a show starring Mark Hamill circa 1983 and 2022 uh, is dystopian at best. And I'm it's not like quite comfortable onion. with that. It is. It truly is. And there have been people who have made some uh, choice comparisons saying that, like, you know, like this is emblematic of the uh, mentality that, like, basically has chased people who like the last Jedi off the internet that like, we are so married to what Luke was and so incapable mm-hmm. of seeing him grow that we are like literally revivifying, uh, Mark Hamill circa 1983 to like play him again. Uh, and while I understand that criticism and I think there is weight to it, uh, I, my, my take on it is slightly less cynical. I think it is incredible. I think it gives us the opportunity, uh, to have moments with Luke that we can only have through this incredible technology, you know, like as again, as much as I agree, but is, you, is that is that you can only have it with Luke, or is that you can only have it with Mark Hamill? I think that it's made more special by having Mark's actual face there, and it's weird. And again, use it sparingly. Like, for example, let's go with the whole Sebastian Stan should play Luke Skywalker thing. I see. I'm on that camp. I know it's a basic bitch casting for the young Luke, but I'm like, if you're going to do it, there's someone like someone like a Sebastian Stan. He looks close to the actor. I think his name is Max Lloyd, the guy who did the body double work for Mandalorian season two. I'd rather just have him. But yeah, I mean, that would work. I don't I don't think that Sebastian Stan as Luke Skywalker talking to Ahsoka Tano would have been as like would would have been as striking as Mark Hamill, Luke Skywalker talking to Ahsoka Tano and. And again, a lot of it's because there's like a, the, the, like because the suspension of disbelief uh, is maintained through seeing the face that canonically makes sense. And I, yeah, I again use it sparingly. I don't think you can use. I don't think every season, every moment requires us to see Luke and Luke be brought back in this way. But this moment right here, how the way they used it was perfect, in my opinion. I, I I think until you can actually shine light on his face, you shouldn't actually use it. Actually, no, I'm I'm going to expand on that. Until you can shine light on his face and actually have him see him talking on screen for a hundred percent of the time, you shouldn't use it. Well, he talks on screen for a lot of that, though. Yeah, but a like, lot. He, you, they a do lot a of lot dialogue. of what you just said throughout a, the a whole. Lot, his there's whole not there's not a single frame on that episode where light is actually bouncing off his face. Is always in shadow. He's sitting in the temple. Granted, there's a massive beam of light. It's hitting his arm. It's not hitting his face. I mean, fair. I understand that criticism. I think it's leaps and bounds better than what we had for many Oh, 100% it, it, it is. Yeah, 100% it is. It's and just, I, I think they were exceedingly clever with, uh, oh, look, it's in daytime. And people kind of went, oh, look, they've done it in the day. That means they're not hiding anything. It's like, He's in shadow a lot of it. It's not dark shadow, granted, but he's in shadow for a lot of it. I would say he's in the shade. Like he's in a shade shadow. 
him right no, now. No, I think there's a big difference between like he's not standing. He's not. I think there's a difference between basking in the sun, and how they frame him in the episode. But he's also not like. I mean, he's know, not wearing hide- a hood. Like, granted, he's not hiding his face for ninety percent of the cameo. But... Yeah. So, so I no, think there's, there's was... certain there's certain moments where he's talk. It's him and Grogu with the frogs, right? And he says like three lines and it's just you're seeing his hand and it's like i know exactly why you're hiding this and i think that's my problem with it I, it, it takes me out of that moment and i'd much rather have a physical actor giving a physical performance with a bit of a soul than have these restrictions on it as what happens if they have right. if they if they have that like, you know the ahsoka show comes out we're gonna see that first meeting between ahsoka and luke Right. Oh, we we God, have I to. Am not ready. We am have not to. Ready. So the happy pills are right here, Jared. It's fine. I got them for you. But <laughs> what happens when it's all just Rosario Dawson's face and the back of Luke's head? Like, well, I, I quite like, frankly, if, with that specific example, I'm gonna be honest. That is exactly the best one that you have because the the crux of that interaction is not Luke's. It was not Luke. It is Ahsoka. Is the crux of that conversation? See, no, I, I. It is Ahsoka learning that Anakin came back and did the right thing. So I think if you like, on if the there's side, you have Luke finding someone who know who's known his father again that was still alive. Oh, there's no, I don't think you that. have one yeah. just have a, a massive reaction to it. I think you need both to have a massive reaction to it. And there's no way in hell is this CGI ready for Luke to have a re- an actual emotive reaction. <laughs> <laughs> he can barely talk as it is. <laughs> yeah, you're right. We'll see how that pans out. But I'm, yeah, ju- I'm no. just like, I- I'm not one of these. No, I don't want to be one of the overly cynical people about this sort of stuff. I just, it's a slippery slope and. If we're going to go down it, can we go down it carefully? No, don't just... Don't I push agree. I agree very much. I don't want to see this become stock standard. You know, it's like that... Isn't there... Are they making like a James Dean movie with James Dean's face? Like, that's... Yeah, that's weird. That's terrifying. I don't want that. Yeah. I don't want that. I think that. part of me... Part of it is also due to the fact that I know when they nail Luke... Because they're, they're going to keep pushing this. I, I'm... You know, I, I've... What is it? I've resigned myself to the fact that this is going to happen. Right? I know yeah. they're going to want to do Leia. No, they're going to say they're not going to do that. But Tarkin's right there. They're not beyond CGI and dead people. I think there's a limit and a... Uh, I, I, I think there's like an unspoken like shot clock before you can do that. Yeah, but it's it just feel it's weird. It is. I agree. I think no matter how good it gets, it's always going to be that a CGI. And I, I don't think you want that. Like Star Wars isn't about being like, oh, that's CGI. That's kind of like half the reason the prequels are bad. It's like, well, that hallway CGI. This is CGI. Those clone troopers are CGI. Like you can't get, you can't immerse yourself in the stuff because you know, for admittedly, you know, you can watch stuff and go, oh, that's CGI right now, but. That at least for me, the part of Star Wars is that practicality and that physicality of everything. And seeing these CGI claymations is like ugh. I again, and maybe uh, I don't I don't mind it. I don't mind it. I think because like the CGI is there now that like some of the best and coolest looking Star Wars effects are a marriage between like crazy cgi and practical effects and i love when those two things come together because there are some star wars things some of the coolest things in star wars you can't do without cgi i mean that, that's true you can't true. Some, some, of many, some of the coolest settings come the coolest moments in, how many of those involve cgi and full people they have I, I close mean, up of that you're right i mean at once i think of general grievous I think of any he, scene involving he's, Grievous. He's not a, he, I wouldn't. He's a, not a person. No. I mean, yeah. <laughs> like those close-ups. I mean, the fight's terrible, but those close-ups of his, of like his skin beneath the mask and the eyes, like those are hyper-realistic looking. That was two thousand five. 
you know, I, 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 I do think again, I, I'm not super into like CGIing people back to life. I'm never going to advocate for that, but on some level, I do think there is utility to using it sparingly for like big moments. Again, looking back on man Mando season two, I was like everybody going, okay, did Grogu reach out to a Jedi? If so, whom? Okay, well, we don't know about Cal Kestis. We don't know what's happened to Ezra, you know, and we're like doing all of these, like, you know, all these mental gymnastics to figure out between like an animated character and a video game character, who the hell are they going to try to put at the end of the episode, if anybody? If there is a Jedi and everyone, oh, well, yeah, well, like Luke Skywalker, but like, how the hell are you going to pull that off? And then they did it. You know, mm. I think that the capacity to tell these stories, you know, hinges on <sighs> the issue with telling any story post Return of the Jedi is that the original cast is essentially out of the holes. And you get to a crossroads where either you can do the Mandalorian type stories that do not involve the original characters uh, whatsoever. At least that's what we thought we would be getting into. Uh, Or you find a way to work them in in whatever way that you can. And again, a Luke Skywalker centric episode of something here or there. Good. I can live with that, especially while we get to watch this technology evolve as they do it. Cool. Leave it there. I again like (laughs) I like it to a degree. And then there is a very steady drop off where I'm like, we need to not use this because this is kind of macabre and terrifying. Mm. I know we'll we'll see how that goes. But yeah, to the actual rest of the show. Yes. To, to the finale, to the finale. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Um, I need, uh, b- before we get into property, I'm going to need actors, directors, writers, showrunners, anyone working on these shows to stop with this whole, the finale is going to blow your mind. It's crazy. It's going to change everything forever. It's like, please, enough. We've, we don't need this anymore but i get why you're doing it but i don't think anything in this finale drastically changed star wars as a whole nah it was great star wars it was very good star wars mainly because i I, for weeks i was just talking about wanting a rancor and we got the rancor and that's all i cared about i think every puppy oh mm. Beautiful moment. Big angry puppy. Mm. And it was practical. Well, not the full thing, obviously, but yeah, a decent, a decent chunk of it was practical. It is a yeah. giant puppet. Yeah. Yeah, but it's we just need to not hype up things because you're just setting yourself up for failure. Really. I I concur. I concur. But with that, it was for this show, for this very middling show, and I'm going to say that right now. It was a decent finale. I can't say, oh, he didn't earn anything because, in all honesty, I don't think there was really much to earn in this finale. He just kind of it went about his thing and did it. It's just like okay, okay, that's that's where I stay. You know, I enjoyed it for the most part. There's some, like every other episode, there's some choices I, I definitely do differently because I think it was a made it a bit more personal for Boba Fett, you know. But, oh yeah, uh, it's... I really enjoyed it. I I hesitate. I, I don't want to call the show middling. Uh, I don't think it is, like, the best piece of Star Wars content we've gotten in the Disney era. Uh, but um, I hesitate to call it middling. I would say it's in the upper echelon uh, That is that does hang out with uh the the like the bottom rung of the really good stuff and uh i'd say in in class with the good stuff uh i think the finale 
A, proved, in my opinion, why it was safe to do with these last two episodes what they did. Um, We got all the development out of Boba Fett that we needed to set him up for this big battle with the Pike Syndicate. Once we saw him fully healed how he got to where he is with Fennec Shand and his, you know, campaign to wipe out the Nikto swoop riders and all of that stuff. Uh, once we saw that, I was like, okay, this is who we all, this is who he is now. Like we have a, have a deep grasp on who he was by the time, pardon me, he got his armor back. And with the present day stuff, we've gotten to see how he's grown in this position of power and how that power rests on his shoulders. And we got to see him go, okay, it's time to fight. And then we got to see uh, where what Din is up to and how Din Din's story in Return of the Mandalorian uh, thematically is carrying the same torch uh, as the rest of the show about reinvention, about uh processing the trauma and grief of where you were and where you came from uh and how you metamorphosize along that journey and finding your tribe and finding your people and the following chapter did the same thing where you see grogu going through the same uh trial and tribulation there of realizing that maybe this whole jedi thing isn't for him and Luke realizing that while he does have a duty to teach the next generation of Jedi, uh, he can't make Jedi. He has to find the people who want to walk that path. And um, I think that's important. And I think there's a lot of weight to that as well. And it all culminates in seeing Boba Fett, the center of this show, not only with his tribe the you know the mods the people of freetown uh all of the people of mos espa who are here to help him fight he he finds his tribe and we see din part of the is part of that tribe we see how much din uh comes to respect and revere boba fett and i think there's a mutual uh camaraderie there that i don't think din circa chapter one of the mandalorian or Boba Fett circa Return of the Jedi would have welcomed or wanted. And I think there's a lot of growth there, and I think there's a lot of emotional payoff that comes from seeing these people uh, who kind of lived on the periphery, Din, who's recently been excommunicated from his cult, and Boba Fett, who, as I said several times now, has been on this path to trying to find his tribe, both finding each other and the camaraderie that they share and standing and fighting for the little guy i i i i absolutely loved what they've done uh and i'm i'm glad that the finale proved right the thematic gambit uh that it took with these last two episodes now i will say i think there is valid criticism uh to be had on in the ways that uh the the indigenous and Asian leads getting kind of pushed out for member Barry Pie of Luke Skywalker and the Muppet, which I get and I think is very valid criticism. Mm, yeah, yeah. Uh, and something that can be talked about and unpacked. But on the whole, I think thematically it was the right play, and that you know it, it like I, I like I've been saying you know. The Book of Boba Fett is a chapter in the epic of the Mandalorian. So while Boba Fett is the main character of the Book of Boba Fett, it is still overall Din Djarin's story. Oh, yeah, yeah. Definitely. And th- th- that that's my takeaway from it. And granted, you know, I, I'm a Din stan, so, like, there's there's bias there, but... Yeah, no, I, I think, I mean, I think everyone like, has that bias because if you look at the general reaction of like, oh, the best two episodes were the ones where Boba Fett was in it for five minutes over two episodes. See, here's the thing. I don't think that you get that without the fact that Din Djarin is a very, very popular new character. And 
the other episode had Luke friggin' Skywalker in it training another Jedi. Like, I, I'm sorry, I don't, I don't think I. I I respectfully, and I, I hope I hope this doesn't get misconstrued. That is like a oh, I hate I hate when people have this have this opinion, and I think it's you're a bad person for having it. Um, because I know I know you, and I know you well enough to know that you you definitely have a more nuanced take than uh, Boba wasn't in it, therefore show bad because no Boba episode good because no Boba. Um, you know, pe- people love those episodes. Not because of the content of the episode, it's or not because of uh, what's going on in the episode, but who's in it. It has nothing to do with the fact that Boba isn't in the episode. It's because it's Luke Skywalker talking to Ahsoka Tano, training Grogu. Din is in it. Cad Bane shows up. Like it's 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 a great episode, and I think its greatness has nothing to do with Boba's little like like minimal involvement. I just I, I don't know. I, I, I think I think it's an incredibly reductive take to be like, oh, the best two episodes that don't have Boba Fett in them. And it's like they're not like they're great, great episodes. Like it's not like I don't think Boba's lack is uh, uh, correlative to that. Uh, no, because like, regardless, like, no, if, if those two episodes were in like Mando season three, they would have still been great episodes. Yeah. Like, like the, obviously, this is Mando 2.5. They build it as much when they, before they even like the show was announced properly. They're like, oh yeah, the next chapter in the Mandalorian. So I can get it from that standpoint. But I think a lot of it is down to the previous what three or four episodes. Was it three yeah. or four? I can't remember. Like it's, I don't think they did a good enough job. Um showing Boba in this new light. I don't think they told that story particularly well. You know, okay. it's, you ha- you have the stuff with the Tusken. Like the, the concepts of what they wanted to do with this character are fantastic, and I will die on that hill. It's just, I don't think they made it engaging enough. And you look at how he, the present day, like everything was focused on the Tuskens, and fair enough, the Tuskens stuff was a lot. I, I've been saying for the last seven weeks, you can cut out a lot of the Tuscan stuff and still have everything intact. Like cut it out, rearrange it, it would have been exactly the same thing. But the present day stuff, he doesn't do anything. It's like, oh, I'm going to walk to the mayor's office. I'm going to say two lines. Something's gonna, not going to go my way. I'm then going to walk back. And then it's, oh, look, we're at the finale now. The Pikes are here. Cad Bane's here. We have to fight. And at least for, I don't know if that's the, like the general consensus of everything and the reason why people aren't hot in this show. But at least for me, that's what it is. So like you didn't make me care about Boba Fett enough. And yes, there's the whole, but he's a side character anyway. Like, you, you should, like what does it matter? And it's like, if you're going to, that's not the um, attitude you need to make a show called your titular character yeah i agree i don't like the uh he's a side character what do you expect uh criticism i think that's asinine um because you have stuff like every marvel show we've had this last year is based on side characters i okay for me I became, I started giving a damn and caring about Boba Fett uh, in season two of The Mandalorian. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. So, like, you know, like before then, I was like, oh, yeah, I get it. The, the characters are crowd favorite. Keep them cool, whatever, whatever. Cool. I knew it was coming. Fine. And then we see him. And it's like, oh, this is nice getting to see Ten again. And then, you know, you and the child will be safe. You, you all <laughs> I'm like, oh, that's interesting. He's, he's like, he's so okay. He and Fennec Shand have a gun trained on this baby, uh, and then he gets his armor back, and he's like, I, I, I gave you my word. We'd save the child, and we're going to save the child. And I'm like, wow, that's a lot for Boba Fett. 
like the guy who is an action figure who exists to just yeah, kill yeah. kill be a good henchman you know is like i'm gonna i told you we'd save the kid we're gonna save the damn kid that was cool i loved it i and I, that was the moment where i was like boba has more going on here than he did but before and you know mando season two you know he's 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 really fascinating, you know. He he actually has a character there, and I don't understand why the love, like like the the fascination with you know post finding Jesus in the Sarlacc pit, Boba Fett doesn't transfer over to Book of Boba Fett for a lot of people. I that confuses the hell out of me. Where like it's the same character, you know. It's like just because a new movie started doesn't mean I have to get reinvested in Iron Man. Yeah, yeah. I, I they think, already, um, I, I, I already got, I got invested thing. in Mandalorian. I'm invested in him now. Like that's, I, I, I don't understand why people are like, well, make me care about him a second time, and then the show does that. Like it's like, here's how you know. Again, the the comparison I've been making on uh, Knights of the Nerd Republic a lot, where is that Boba Fett uh, in in Mandalorian and here in Book of Boba Fett, he feels like Jules at the end of Pulp Fiction. Yeah, you know, the, you know, it's that like I, I have, you know, you know, sometimes fate steps in for the wicked, uh, and uh, the wretched. I think he says, and he is saved by providence, and he's given a second chance, and he's really trying to figure out what he should do with that second chance. I think that's fascinating. I think this newfound sense of honor. And uh, communal responsibility is deeply profound. And I think it is an incredible direction to take Boba Fett. And I think that there's a reason why most of the show, it, it, its driving force is in the past. Because I don't think it takes much to set up a, like, a, a, a gang war on Tatooine. I, like, I think that's why the present day stuff is lacking is because there's not much story you have to tell. No, it's not and, a hard story to tell. I think it's very simple to go like, oh, yeah, he wrestles up this group of youngins, you know, this punk rock group of punks on Tatooine. He employs them. He befriends Black Kersantan after the assassination attempt. And oh, oh, damn, here comes the Pike Syndicate. We need to mobilize and take them on. I like I, I understand that not a whole lot happens in the present day plot. And I will concede that I think it could use some fine tuning, but I think it. I think the present day plot is still pretty strong, just because it doesn't require a whole lot of setup. I think I've said this to Sean here as well. I think all this show needed was one extra episode. I agree. I said that several times on Bob Badcast mm. last night. Mm. Give, give it an episode. eighth episode of just pure present day stuff. Because let, let's be honest, right? It, the, the worst. I say the worst part about this show for for me on an emotional level, the worst part about this show is it gave me exactly what I want for five minutes. And it to, to me, it felt exactly what the show wanted you to think this show is about. And that's Boba Fett sitting at a table with all these different tribe leaders of Tatooine. And he, he has them above the rancor trapdoor apart from one person at the end. And it's just like, the Boba father. And he's like, look, you, you help me. I help you. You know, you don't have to help us. Just promise you're going to stay out of it. Like I'm taking over this stuff now. Like we're going to, as he says in every episode, I'm going to rule out of respect, not fit. And it's like, okay, okay, fine. Well, show us how you're going to rule out respect. Immediately in that, in that instance, he's like, I'm going to go straight for fear. And it's just like, there's a bit of the old Bubba coming out there. But that, that scene is might be it's at least tied for my favorite bit in this whole show of boba fett stuff and it's like if you had another episode of just that fantastic i would a lot of my stuff would have been washed away but we didn't get that it's just hey boba's palace because it's not jabba's anymore mayor's office boba's palace mayor's office here's a scene with a pike go yeah, I, I I do think there's a lot you can do with like a, adding an episode. Um, I, I I will absolutely agree. And a with decent you length one. None, none, none of this like thirty five minute crap. Like I, 
you need a decent like 50 minute one yeah well again i think if you do an extra episode and you cut in more boba stuff even during like the two episodes that don't have him in them much you know i i think you can absolutely do that and i i don't know i i my, my biggest gripe by the end of the show is that I'm very curious how Mandalorian season three is going to make me okay with Grogu coming back already. Yeah, that that's, I am not a fan. I, I do not like it. It, it felt, um, oh, what's the word for it? I can't. He didn't, he didn't need to be there. Th- this finale loses nothing if he wasn't there. Uh, I, I, I take Grogu out of it. You can find a different way to stop the rancor. You can find a different way to stop the um. I can't what the what the droids called. I can't think what they're called. We talk, I, I again. I the Scorpex something like that. Yeah, I, I want to say I got Scorpion knocking my head. And I don't know why. But anyway, you, you can find a different way to the stop droid the droidicas on steroids. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, the the things that I find funny that people aren't questioning how exactly they work, but they're questioning why a black guy's spinning around in a circle. But that Star Wars fandom for you a different conversation. But well, yeah, a very specific subset of the fandom that uh, I don't claim. It's it's weird though. I don't get it. It's like he just spins. <laughs> Somebody does. Dude, he just spins. What? Who cares? I saw this post where it was like. Like the worst characters in the Disney era of Star Wars, like come in pairs. And it was uh, Amelyn Holdo and Rose Tico, Trace and Rafa Martez, and uh, Scad and Drash. And I commented on that post where I was like, I don't know about you guys, but I'm noticing a pattern here. Uh, yeah, <laughs> and then they were all, and then everyone, everyone suck. was either They'd oblivious or playing dumb in response. Yeah. And I'm like, did you notice how like y'all always react to this when there's a not white dude? Yeah, wow. every time, like every time. <laughs> you know, do I think the mods are the best thing since sliced bread? No. Would I have changed some things about them? Yeah, but I'm not Robert Rodriguez. I'm not the guy who made Spy Kids, who, who then put Spy Kids in virtually everything he does. So I kind of expected stuff like this in his Star Wars. Uh, Star Wars, here's my thing, and it's not even that I disliked it. It was just super jarring and like... Yeah, yeah. You know, like there there was... I, I had a moment as a fan where I was like, Star Wars has cyberpunk now. Which, uh, But here's the thing, it always did. Uh, it, it's Bates, had cyberpunk no, it, elements. It has never gone this hard. In it's never gone direction. this hard into it. No, granted, it's never done that. But it's like whole the prequels in Coruscant. Like that's a cyberpunky looking place. It's a cyberpunky looking place. Like Star Wars, yes, is always barred from the aesthetics of cyberpunk. But I mean, like a literal group of like punk rocker type people. Who are like super into body modification and like 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 everything from like piercings to hi look at my giant robot eyeball you know <laughs> like you know like their bikes you know it was like again like that's like to steal something from what uh alden diaz from octo radio said uh about about the bikers you know that's punk rock is whatever or punk in general is whatever would be a refutation of the mainstream is regardless of where you yeah. are. So if you want to be punk on Tatooine, you're trendy, stylish and colorful. If you want to be punk on Coruscant, you look like you're from Tatooine. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, like, that's, that's totally fair. Totally fair. So like the, so like it's literally super cyberpunk. In a, in, a, in 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 the space fantasy realm, where you know Star Wars has more in common with a fairy tale than it does a sci-fi story. Like yeah. it, its DNA is more oriented towards fantasy, and 
it's it was just super again i don't dislike it i was just like holy hell this it is, is it is jarring and even in no uh, especially the, the chase in that one episode where it's the twilight guy and he's in that speedster and they're going after him it j- i think maybe i think it's too real world how they're dressing like the denim jackets cut off at the sleeves and all this it's like that's a bit too much what i'd see when i walk go to london or something like you go down that's, town and that's just literally every single person you'll ever you'll ever meet and it's not i don't know it's like they're from two different shows now i've got no problem with cyberpunk aesthetic at all it's just maybe tone it down just slightly like you know even the, even the vespers i've got no problem with those just tone them down a little bit uh you mean uh primary colors is when power rangers oh yeah 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 the, the, i i'm you know the, i'm a 30 something all i know of colors is power rangers people yeah yeah that was mind numbing but yeah, i that's... yeah no i Again, there's stuff like, like there's the shot of when Boba and Fennec are walking up the stairs to the mayor's office, and the nose behind him. You're like, what? <laughs> this is a a really odd shot. Like, I get what they're going for, but you have all this brown, and then you've got the the, or- the black and the orange, and then the green and the red and the yellow for Boba, and then it's just primary colors behind him. It's like, huh? <laughs> this is a... you know. I think what's interesting with Book of Boba Fett is that there's a very specific brand of weird that Star Wars is and always yeah. will be. Yeah. And Robert Rodriguez, as a creator, is has his own style of weird. So you're seeing Robert Rodriguez weird meld with Star Wars weird. And it, I like it. And it's really... It, it, like, again, it's just... It is... Uh, a, a recipe for constantly jarring content and mm. i love I when star wars makes me... me go huh you know like that's my favorite reaction to a star wars thing sometimes is just being able to go huh i say part of me wonders if they let rodrick because th- this is you no know, for all intents and purposes rodriguez is he's toning himself down for this show he's reined himself a oh yeah bit. but you know the the whole um like clash of the titans claymation monster that bubba takes out for the little youngling tuscan to parade head his head back but i'm gonna go back to the camp like that, that's yeah. that's spy kids that is absolutely a spy kids moment but i i wonder if they let him do a bit more of him in this in reaction to solo and lord and miller because you all know how that went down then people are like, well, why hire the people if you're, gonna, if you're gonna not like what they do, sort of thing. And it's like in a different timeline, is that movie very much a Lord and Miller movie with a similar reaction to what this is getting? I'm not sure. I think that <sighs> that's a really hard question to ponder, and especially it's for a very me, hard as question. someone especially for me we're like i'm not as not, not as much as armin but like i also am a you know ride or die for solo a star wars story so i don't necessarily feel as though uh i know what the lord miller version would have been like because i like what we have so that's its own can of worms i think that by and large, uh, what we get in this finale and what we get from Rodriguez whenever it is him in the director's chair, because you only get him for three episodes, uh, yeah. does distinctly feel like his style. You know, like the like like forget, you know, discount Goro. Uh that's the name I was looking for. <laughs> I was like, but, I can't think of the name, but then you know forget discount goro i think that you know the rancor you know fighting its way through the streets the way that the whole fight with between when it's just din and boba fighting off the pikes you know i've been describing it as like boba fett's like rupaul pose that like work bitch 
when he's like <laughs> firing off the pistol and his knee darts. I love that shot. So that was the most fabulous thing so I've ever good. seen in Star Wars. <laughs> um, you can hear the Sailor Moon music go off, just like yeah. Oh my god! Like I said, like I I, I said on Bombadcast, I need people. I need someone who's a better editor than me to put RuPaul music behind that, <laughs> just so that just like you know, oh it. it <sighs> It's so funny. But anyway, I yeah, just want to know how that thing works. I love it. I love it. I love it so much. It is so perfectly silly in Star Wars and it's perfect. Yeah. yeah. And I could not ask for more. And I yeah, I, I I I think we get a good bit of Rodriguez in this. I think you're right that he's toning it down a little bit. But there's still some stuff in there that I don't think you get from anybody else. Yeah, and the spin is a hundred percent a Rodriguez moment. Yeah, a hundred percent. And the, I, you know, fair enough. People might have watched Spy Kids when they were five and just don't remember anything, or maybe that's the only thing they watched of Rodriguez before. And it's just like, yeah, he's just very much a, it's a trope of his. Yeah, and you know, you, you can always just put it down to well, he's dodging the blaster shot that hits the wall behind him. Then there's yeah. the argument of, oh, but that shot's way too late. It's like a bad a shot, a, a dodge on a bad shot is still a dodge. Doesn't take it away. Like you can very much make the point of he's like faking out where he's going. It's not difficult or a the fact that the this is what we are litigating is just it's, again, it's, it's so it, I I hate it. It's so weird. it is the mind numbing Star Wars discourse that has come to yeah. plague this fandom. I I just I hate I, it. I I always put it down to if that if you're picking at something that minor and that dumb, then that finale did a lot right for you, and you're just wanting to find something. Well, it. you know, and I said this in the Facebook group last night, and I'm pretty sure it pissed a couple people off, but it's true. Um, this is a special brand of Star Wars frustration that, again, only comes up when it's not a white dude and something mm -hmm. bathed in nostalgia. The same people who go to bat for anything pre-Disney, you know, the prequels especially, just magically gloss over all the same things they complain about happening there, you know, and, like, don't, don't look me in my eyes and tell me, where's the point of this business is so stupid, you know, when like you hear John Williams battle of the heroes and immediately bust in your pants. Like <laughs> that whole fight is a dance and it's, a, it's beautifully choreographed. It's shot like shit. And edited to all hell and back to where you can barely understand what Obi Wan and Anakin are doing in that fight, but it's incredibly well choreographed. And what's the crux of like what happens in the middle of that fight? What's the thing that everybody on the internet tries to replicate because spinning is fun? It said <laughs> happens. Like, please, please shut up. I don't care. I, I honestly blame that one shot for ruining an entire generation of people. I don't know about an entire generation, uh, but yeah. like yeah, the yeah. worst uh, the worst Star Wars fans are just so deeply so hypocritical. Nothing nothing in this world it. has been right since Obi-Wan and Anakin stood there twirling CGI sticks. Nothing in the world has been right. That was the, the catalyst moment of our timeline. Perhaps. But yeah, I just the, the, the spin discourse is making my head hurt. And is it making you we, dizzy? A uh, little bit, a little yeah. bit. But yeah, no, I think I, I, I like it. I like the finale. I think yeah. it's a lot of fun. Um, now, yeah, we haven't touched upon this in the slightest. And um there's a specific line of dialogue said by this one specific character that made me kind of think about the show a little bit. And it's Cad Bane saying, what's your angle? And he can't figure out what Boba's angle is here. And I think that might be my problem for a lot of this. Okay. It's like, it's like you know, he's... I get the whole born again bit. But why go for Tatooine? Why go for what Jabba did? Why not start his well, own thing back up? 
he, why well, not here's, go to Mandalore? Here's why. Well, first of all, he he's not wanted by the Mandalorians, and he knows that. He is... He and his father are both cast out by the culture that saved them, and I think that's an incredibly, like, okay, you don't want me, I don't want you. Piss off. I think that Boba, you know... He he emerges from quite literally symbols of. Um, it's a very powers. unsubtle born again reference. Well, not even that. Like if you look around him, he is surrounded by things, uh, of, of by pa- places of power and institutions that he helps subjugate people for, and he himself is also subjugated by. And when he wakes up in the Sarlacc pit that has been used by Jabba to feed his enemies, uh, and he he finds a dead stormtrooper in there, you know, it's him realizing in a very cosmic, metaphorical way, when you get down with dogs, you get up with fleas. And it's him realizing he has fallen victim to a very, very heinous system of uh, subjugation and oppression. And he is unlearning all of that. He is, you know, again, you know, I don't think it is a mistake that they're telling this story with an indigenous man in the lead role. Uh, You know, this is very much a story of one decolonizing himself. And and I'm I'm sure that hits home for you, Mitch. And uh, wow, Wow. that was a British joke. Laugh. (laughs) That's an an at you laugh, not a a with you, just to clarify. (laughs) I thought it was funny. I hope that got a laugh from somebody listening back to this. Anyway, if there's anything I've learned being on the internet and being where I'm from, it's that Americans will just go <laughs> British. No, you just mentioned the word in your laugh, so don't worry. Yeah. Hey, but I made an actual joke. The, the, the low, the low hanging fruit has been plucked. No, it's, it's fine. I know, but I jumped up really high to get it on the way down. <laughs> uh, Are you sure? Yeah. Yeah, That's but anyway, I'm, I'm I'm losing I'm losing my metaphor here because uh, <laughs> we're making British jokes. But you know, Boba he he he's saved by these Tuscans who, you know, again, fate steps in for the wretched, and he he's saved, and he sees how the Tuscans are taken advantage of uh, by the very people he was in league with, and they were at the very least people who occupy the same space. So Boba sees an opportunity to affect change and do something with his second chance that matters. He also has not completely shaken loose his proclivity for violence and uh, the way that that is absolutely a way of him processing his uh, trauma. So Boba goes into this situation, into his new life uh, from two different perspectives one of oh hey i can affect real change on tatooine and like protect the people who are downtrodden by you know these very very corrupt uh you know syndicates uh, and also it was like and while i'm at it i'm gonna kill the sons of bitches who got me killed <laughs> which is a really fun story which granted you know hell i could have done for more of him dismantling bib fortuna's hold you know, I could have done for more of that. But, yeah, I think that's why. That's his angle. He just wants to do the right thing and help people. And to someone like Cad Bane, who is do- willing to do anything for the right price, the fact that Boba's here, you know, free of charge, just trying to do the right thing and help other people, that's mind-boggling to Cad Bane. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. It's fair. Like point. Boba's out here it's willing to point. die for strangers who don't <laughs> like him. Yeah, that's a fair point. Yeah. yeah. Cad Bane kidnapped children and didn't ask why. <laughs> it's true. Because it's true. Because that paycheck came in and it was looking real nice. I love that. I love that. I love yeah, his showdown with Cad Bane. I think it is very emblematic of the growth Boba has experienced. But still has a ways to go. Yeah, uh, I wish um, when Disney got Star Wars, they never scrapped that Clone Wars episode. I agree. I think <laughs> it's like the entire context funny. of the showdown 
and the weight of that showdown was ironically scrapped by the company making the show depicting that showdown well that's the thing is did the showdown still happen in canon or is it like is this the well, new version of the showdown that doesn't feloni always consider the cut stuff canon he says that but then he also does stuff that completely contradicts them it's true so that's who's very to say true. it's true yeah right. <laughs> the, the feloni dave feloni, dave feloni i love what he does and he is say what you will about him he is his mentor student oh yeah, and yeah, yeah. i yeah. while i like what dave does to say and does with a lot of stuff he also has a tendency to be like if i didn't make it i don't give a damn yeah yeah and there's a lot of stuff that just gets weirdly changed for some tenuous reason and I, that's one thing i don't like with dave but yeah now who's to say but you know i think that you see boba rejecting cad bane's like just leave just leave let us do what we're doing it that literally will move. cost you nothing to get out of my way it might even make you money to get out of our goddamn way but I was like, no, I'm going to help these people. I'm not going to let you keep getting them hooked on that stuff. And I'm not going to let you keep using it to keep people down. I'm not going to let you keep using Tatooine as a breeding ground for your bank account. It's over. And I'm willing to die for it. And Boba using the in, in tandem with the tribe that he has surrounded himself with is able to push back against the pikes. And I love the fact that Boba uh, defeats Cad Bane, who as an individual is a symbol for everything wrong with the galaxy. Cad Bane is a man who took money from the Sith to do the bidding of the Confederacy, uh, who, you know, we don't know what he was up to during the Galactic Civil War, but like, <laughs> he certainly didn't do anything to stop the Empire, and we know that he could have. He absolutely could have been a huge player in fighting against the Empire. Clearly, the Rebellion couldn't afford him. So, Cad Bane represents all of that. He represents Boba's past. He represents everything Boba has grown beyond. Mm. And him being killed with the Gadurfi that he built with the Tuscans who helped him change is incredibly profound but the fact that he still killed him shows that he has work to do and the heavy, fact that heavy heavy like, asterisk on that i think cad bane's dead and i hope yeah. he stays dead but like but like even if even if you want to put asterisk next to killed and we're going to see if bane returns you know like he was still doing like the crazy eyes you know again he's again if he found jesus in the sarlacc pit he found jesus in the dune sea uh, but he has not become a man of peace. He is still somebody yeah. with a, again, very deep propensity for violence and brutality. His father's son got his father's blood pumping. And I think he's starting to unlearn some of that stuff. You know, it's generational trauma. You know, Django yeah. was saved by Death Watch. You know, Django was trained to be this bloodthirsty killer and made a career out of it. You know, and I'm sure that if Django had his druthers, murdering people for money wouldn't be his first career choice. Probably not, no. You know, so like, there's a lot to unpack there, I think, for both Boba and Django, and it's generational trauma there. And uh, Star Wars is so deep. When it really <laughs> wants to be, when you're, when, you're, when you're willing to let Star Wars be deep and go beyond lightsaber, go burr, you there's a lot that you can talk about and uncover about these stories. I mean, you just look at the allegories. Exactly. And then he's like, he, he did just spin. He did not spin. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> uh, uh, people are funny with Star Wars. But um no, I, I do I kind of wish this show I I'm going back to my whole one more episode would have been enough. I think he maybe two. I think they need to give the Cad Bane Bubba backstory a bit more context for everyone. Because it is weird. Like, this guy just shows up out of nowhere. Admittedly, he's got a flair for the dramatics because he he, he parked whatever he came into Tatooine on 
a thousand miles away from old Freetown, just so he yep. could dramatically walk in. But um, yeah, I think it just needed that little bit of Cad Bane Bubba context. So, oh, my final lesson to you. It's just like, eh? Uh, all that is in a cut episode. Like, where's... N- now would have been a really good time to put that back in. Like, you could have extended the finale and then had uh, a good half hour of Cad Bane and Bubba, but I don't know. No, I agree. I think you can, again, I think you can add an extra episode or two, and I would do the show a great service. I agree with you completely on that. And I def- I, I'm on firm in defense of he's not dead. You do not give an audio cue, like for Cobb Vanth, because there was very much audio cues that he's not going to be dead to someone who is, in fact, dead, because that is a very distinct clicking and the, the light starts flashing on his chest. I do not believe in any sense. And if he is dead, I'm 90% certain he's coming back. I'd be okay with seeing Bane in the past again. I just don't want to see Cad Bane moving forward. What if they did? I don't know where you fit him in. Uh, I think that the... There's one bit of speculation I've seen floating around the interwebs about how the Star Wars TV stuff could be building towards an adaptation, a canon adaptation of Heir to the Empire. And what's that about? The basically the the Thrawn trilogy, like the the legends. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, and I, I I I quite like that idea. And I think that in theory, Cad Bane could fill the position that Boba Fett had in that story. Uh, so there's a place for him. I'm just very okay with him being dead. Fair, fair. I just, I just don't need every single Star Wars villain who isn't decapitated to come back. Even <laughs> you can make an argument that one of the decapitated Star Wars villains now has a whole ass TV show. So like, I'm good. I don't need any more. They always make it count, but I don't I don't need Cad Bane to get back up. He was decapitated. That's got his TV show. Django. Oh, of course. Yeah. That's what I thought you meant. And I was like, he hasn't got his own. And it's like, I've, technically, he's Bubba. So it's like, yeah. I, I, I... Like I said, a very semantic argument can be made there. I, I, Not uh, I, I'd make, but. I just had a slow moment there. That's what that was. Oh, you're good. But, um, right. I think we kind of exhausted the, the, the what's happened in it. Where do you think this is all going? Uh, you know, again, me, I, I like the whole heir to the empire thing. I think you can do yeah. more. I think, I think there's also other like crime. Like if this whole show's in a, revolve around underworld stuff man there's still lots of folks boba would have to deal with if he's trying to like help clean up the galaxy's underworld and like i want to see boba fett a more virtuous version you know moving forward just because that's the 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 direction he's headed as a character i want to see him do what crime boss red hood was trying to do uh, with that right whole head. with that whole like you know now granted you know he was like we're not gonna let spice run through tatooine anymore because he's like trying to clean up tatooine but like so like that whole you know you guys are gonna commit your crimes you guys are gonna do what you're gonna do but you're gonna do it on my terms and you're gonna do it where i can keep you contained you know like that whole, you know, deal your drugs amongst each other. Don't you go near a school or I'll kill you type yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. That is what like that basic idea is what I'd enjoy seeing from Boba where he's like where he recognizes that the underworld of the Star Wars galaxy exists for a reason 
uh, and that he can't undo that underworld, but at the very least, he can make it a safer place to occupy. Yeah, yeah. Because my thing, you know, this is supposed to be Mando 2.5. It's acting as a bridge between season two and season three. But it didn't necessarily feel like it leads into anything. Well, I think it's its own, again, it's its own story inside of a greater narrative. I mean, it is, but it's so if you're going to have a little bridge, you kind of got to give a hint at what at least what Din's going to be up to next. Well, we did with episode five episode. Book of Boba Fett got so much shit out of the way for season three. Did it, though? Yeah. Yeah. Din has a ship again. Din has you know had to i question how with... long he's gonna have that in one in all honesty i hope he gets a bigger ship that he can park the n1 in uh i hope he's I'm, like I'm ha- i hope he gets something like the twilight from clone wars where it's like here is a freighter big enough to have a small hangar to put a starfighter in you you want him to be cowboy bebop kind of uh I, I, can, I don't I can get down with that actually, you know. I, I, I in terms of what he has at his disposal, yes. Uh but we get Din getting a, a new ship. We have Din confronting the children of the watch and being excommunicated. We have Din grappling with what it means for him to be carrying the Darksaber. He uh, we've already knocked out like three of the big what is going on and like questions that were asked. You know, like the fact that episode five has Den removed from the end of season three of The Mandalorian, still taking bounty hunting jobs using the dark saber, means that we've already gotten off of the light cruiser, which means season three does not need to worry about picking up where it left off. Which is big, because that means you don't have to worry about Carano. And you don't have to just jump right back into the immediate aftermath. Now, again, that comes at the expense of Grogu coming back instantaneously. And again, I have uh, sobbed every time I see them <laughs> together. I, I, I can't lie, get a little broody. Just like, oh, the baby. Oh, look, the little baby. And just like, oh, what's going on? What's happening to me? Yeah. Oh, my God. I just... <laughs> I was watching the finale with my girlfriend and the moment Pelimoto like flips the blanket off of him and he jumps into his arms. I just, um, I broke down. <laughs> I broke down <laughs> completely. Um, I, I just looked at my girlfriend. I was like, I uh, love Star Wars. <laughs> I love Star Wars. I love him so much. Uh, yeah, immediately. Yeah, I, I went from that and then instantly that that kind of settles down and it's like well why did why was he here what why did they do that i i know I, I think i really liked the whole midlife crisis thing that they had been going through yeah and it's like no my, my little station wagon my, my little winnebago you know that's gone i need something to get around now oh hey here's an old school corvette here's a ferrari i'm gonna go with this and zoom around the place completely yeah. impractical and it's like they they just went up and went away and I did away with it. It's just like, oh, really? Why? We could have. No, I, I'm not going to judge what they're going to do because of what it's not. I, I'm not going to be that guy. But they they blue balled me with something I would have. Because you know, the whole thing of everyone, you know, the last year is like, well, what's he going to do? Like, what are they going to do without him? What are they going to do? How's he going to go on? How are they going to make this whole show without Baby Yoda or Grogu, whatever? And they just, we didn't even get to the third season. It's like, yeah, we're going to undo that. That's uh, that's not going to hang around like psych. That's not, not a thing at all. And part of me really feels like the only reason why they've done that in this show is because of the reaction to CGI Luke in season two. I don't. Oh, okay. I'm going. I, I'm going that cynical with it. I don't think so. I think that I was hopeful 
to see what uh, Din Sans Grogu would look like. But I, again, it's one of those situations, and I say this all the time with Star Wars stuff. I say it all. I say it all the time with all kind all of these stories all the time. Is this the decision I would have made creatively? No. Can they absolutely prove me wrong and impress me regardless? Absolutely. Oh, a hundred percent. I, I, I as, as I said, I'm not going to judge what they do because it's not what I would have done. Yeah, like, it's it's not what I'm judging for what it is, not what it's not. Precisely. So I'm not. I'm not sure. I think that season three is going to move very much into the reclamation of Mandalore. Uh, that oh, is yeah, I, I think there's. I think there's two <laughs> routes they're gonna go, because I, 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 I was convinced from early on in the season that it was gonna be Bubba who's ended up with a dark saber, and then you come along as like Din's struggling to use the damn thing. It's like he's absolutely gonna give that thing away. Now, could that be a season three plot point? Sure, hundred percent. I don't think he's gonna be holding on to it for much longer, but I was expecting it in this. Didn't happen. It's fine, but I, don't, I think that might have been a. The more earth-shattering quotes thing to happen in this finale that might have lived up to what the cast and crew were saying. Perhaps, perhaps, perhaps. I uh, I want to see Din become the actual Mandalore. I I, I want to see Din. I have never seen a Star Wars in my life. Jaren become <laughs> the king. For real, it's so funny. He's never like Din Djarin has never seen Star Wars, and it's my favorite thing about his character. He is so yeah, confused yeah. by everything, and I love it. Which is a bit odd, isn't it? It's like, how does he, how does he not know? Oh, when you're all cooped up with a cult, that'll do it to you. You know what? I retract. Fair point. Exceedingly fair point. This is why I like having you on, Jared. You always, you make me learn stuff. That's what I'm here for. Mm. Like I said, it's the whole academy thing, you know. You know what? It's on brand. I appreciate it. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. There you go. Mm. But Americans' education, who'd have thought? Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. Now our academy even. exists on its own soil. We're like, it's like an embassy. Sovereign nation. I like it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, now, now I want to immediately walk that back and say I am not into the sovereign citizen. <laughs> uh, that's not where I hang out. You're not going to Peter Griffin it? Uh, make your own. No, no, I'm no, not. I am not. That's totally fair. Not in this economy anyway. But um, uh, yeah, I I think this finale needed to set up more of what season three. Because, you know, yes, we got it got some stuff out of the way. And it's like, yeah, they're back together again. Look, he's happy that they can go super fast now. But it's what's where is it headed? Because even with the Boba Fett storyline of him taking over everything, it's like, oh, maybe we're not cut out for this. And I, I, I don't know. It's just a bit a confusing messaging at the end, I think. Personally. I don't quite think so. I think it's pretty consistent with itself. I mean, it is, but it. I mean, I think it is and it isn't. It's just an, it's an odd line to have at the end. It's like, oh, we, we've done all of this, and then oh, maybe we're not cut out for all this. It's like, did we just spend like? No, I see. I I at first I had that reaction, but I think what Bob is like is going like. Yeah, it's weird with the whole people bowing thing. I'm just never gonna get used to that. You know, is it like mm. he's never gonna he's never gonna be the type of leader who's like resting on his laurels in the palace. He's going to be walking the streets of Mos Espa, making sure people are safe, making sure people are taken care of, helping who he can, and uh, doing what he can for who he can't. And yeah, I I think it's more getting at Boba going like I'm never gonna quite get used mm. to the whole. People bowing thing it's just never going to accept like the whole like like the twins getting carried on their litter by three dozen people you know that is like (laughs) that is the polar opposite of what boba fett of of boba fett right now and he will never be that and he will never any form of that weird 
almost pseudo royal defer deference is something he's never going to be able to get down with. Mm. But it's just a weird editing choice because you have that he throws croissant in the melon, and then it hard cuts to Cobb Vance in the back to take. Yeah, and it's like, I, am I supposed to take away that he's going to be taking over everything now? no although i did like uh, the little subversion they had in there about how everyone's always like we didn't you back and get a medal in the oven and it's like hey why did the why did the wookie get a melon why, why, why <laughs> get a melon? yeah i'm convinced that's what they were going for you yeah, can't convince me that, they, that was not like a that was not a joke on chewbacca not getting a medal yeah I I I'm waiting for. Do, do they do the behind the scenes with these things? They do, didn't they? Yeah, they do. It depends. I know they did like they only did two for Mandalorian season two. They only did like a whole like a one one big the whole show how we yeah. did it, and then they did one just about Luke. They did, didn't they? Yeah. So, who's to say what they'll do for Book of Boba Fett? Hmm. Right, because it's one of those where if he has Cobb Vanth taking over, because I, I don't believe Boba Fett's going to be um, content with just one place on Tatooine, or even just Tatooine as a whole. Maybe not. I th- I Maybe he will grow respect. his respectful empire. And that's where else did... If we're going the Mandalore direction, why not have Mandalore and Tatooine? Maybe, maybe. Because I was convinced something to do with Mandalore was happening in the show. Convinced. I wasn't holding my breath for that. Yeah, thankfully, a lot of the leaks were false because lol young Han Solo was not in the show. <laughs> and thank God. Thank God. I was not expecting that either. No, no. I saw that and I was like, there's no way. They ain't doing that. Not again. There is, but, I would not, that is one of those, like, you got to dedicate at least an episode to Boba and Han crossing paths. Like, that, that, that's removing all of the, the CGI nonsense from the equation. Yeah. Like, yeah. you have to dedicate an episode to Boba Fett going, hey, I'm really <laughs> sorry. My bad. Hands up, my bad. Hands up, my bad, and then just have, like, an awkward... Okay, now is the part where you apologize to me for knocking <laughs> me into the Sarlacc pit. Uh, I don't know what you're talking about there, Boba. Last I remember, you got me frozen in carbonite. You know, like, just that whole interaction is worth a whole mm. episode unto itself. Yeah, it would have been weird, but uh, I was definitely yeah. expecting some Mandalore, Mandalorian stuff to happen, but he did not. Nope. Which is totally fine, totally fine. It'd be like that. But before we go, I need to make it clear to everyone. Can we stop judging the look of Cad Bane based on a very hyper-stylized cartoon? <laughs> I, I I need this conversation to be had. Mitch, you're cute. The entire, the entire planet. That's That's adorable if you can, think. Can we stop? Absolutely, I know it's brain a dead very, takes like that. I, I'm like, absolutely shouting into the void here. But can we please? For, especially when this character comes from a show that pinched and stretched Count Dooku's face an extra three mile long. Yeah. Uh, this is Count Dooku looks like Squidward's house. You could have just said it easier on in here. You could have just gone with these. I know what I could have said. Instead, I'm you very went specifically. With you are I'm... such a zoomer. You went straight oh. for the SpongeBob movie. Don't, 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 don't say that like it's an insult, Mitchell. Don't. I mean, don't. I respect my people. I, <laughs> I, I am a representative Look, of SpongeBob is a millennial Z-Lex. show. The Zoomers have up, uh, you know, they are taking over. I'm a Z-lennial. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, am right on top line. Worse, isn't it? You're, you're the worst of both. I yeah, I am the worst of. But neither one wants me. <laughs> neither one wants me, and I don't want either of the. I don't. I don't want, <laughs> 
<laughs> you want to be independent? I, in in the generational war, I will probably side with the Zoomers, but I mean, why wouldn't you? You're gonna last longer. Right. Well, actually, yeah. that's, 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 that's that's kind of debatable, really. Um, judging the the state of the planet right now, but yeah, we'll figure it out. Yeah. Will you though? Yeah, with me yeah. in charge, sure. But would they? Ex- do Zoomers have like their own version of Dark Saber? Like, how do you become the top Zoomer? There is so many is like, like different a, is like stratified like types of Zoomer that that is so hard to answer that question. Like, but there's is, probably is there like a TikTok that everyone just accepts that you're the top of everything. Yeah, I mean, there's like TikTok memes that become like ubiquitous across of all sides of TikTok, but like. It's it, it's it's a lot. It's it's very complicated. I the anthropology of Gen Z is something that's really hard to unpack. Just not organized. Yeah, that's true. Coming from the millennial, that's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> something something killing mm. industry. Something something avocado toast. Something something. Oh, we didn't kill no industries. It was dead when we got here. That's true. No. But I, I completely lost where I was going with it. Totally lost the train. No, you were annoyed with how people keep being like, he doesn't look like the cartoon. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's... It, yeah, it's... It's brain dead. It's it, so it, stupid. It he looks great. If, like... I can understand people saying, can you make him a darker blue? Okay. Yeah, and I will fully admit I was on that wagon for five minutes. I was like, he looks weird, and then I I, I said it was Sean. My brain doesn't function with Star Wars in the timeline sense. Like I've got no concept of how long ago things were, and it's like, well, if you look at when Cad Bane was operating in Clone Wars and all this, that's like thirty years ago. (laughs) So what? Thirty. Cad Bane is seventy-one. Most Duros only live to seventy. Damn, so he old. What happens he is ancient. I I, I'd hate to see how saggy certain parts are. But if we get the visualization of how old he is by the skin color, it makes sense. Stuff fades. Yeah. Stuff elongates, stuff wrinkles and shrivels. Him being a paler blue is totally fine with me. It makes sense. Especially if he's past the average lifespan for his like, species, yeah, that that's that's totally fine with me. Totally fine. Yeah, he's he's high end. You know, assuming like he wouldn't, assuming he didn't or wouldn't have died fighting Boba Fett, he did not have much oh, he mo- ain't dead. much much longer. He ain't dead. There's no way. There's no way. We'll see. I think you'd be a bit remiss if he's killed off. I'm not okay. even sure if a mist is the right word to use there, actually, but I used it anyway. It's all right. It's a little freestyling. I just, my brain just says words. If it comes out, it comes out. But... As I like to say to my girlfriend, sometimes I just do be saying shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And it'd be true. It'd be true. And she said that. She said, sometimes what you, you do be saying something true. I said, yeah, but a lot of the time I'm just saying shit. <laughs> <laughs> I think it and I say it and it's probably Oh, I don't even think it. it, it I just say it. <laughs> Talk first, think later. That's you know sound yep. like we're out of time. The people are like, oh but you said this. I'm like, did I say that? I don't remember saying that. It's like I wonder why I forget how to stuff I say. It's probably yeah. I actually think about it. Oh yeah. You hear it, I... hear it again, you're like, you know what, I stand by that. Oh my god, I'm at the point where like I just I, I I record so much stuff at this point where like if I listen back to something and I'm like, is that my opinion? <laughs> oh, I've done that. <laughs> I was like, did I really think that? Like, wow. Wow, that's a that's a take. You're like, I want to debate me. I mean, you can debate yourself all you like, Jared, but you do that in your private time. Oh, good God. I, I can <laughs> feel it coming. I said that. I'm like, here comes the... This isn't even low-hanging fruit. This fruit is on the floor. Like, I mean, hey. 
Just because it's falling don't mean it tastes bad. No. Uh huh. Uh-huh. You know. But yeah. Um, get off a of Cad Bane. He 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 looks fine. He looks great. I think Cad Bane is a very good indicator of what we're going to see later down the line and how things are going to look. I hope so. Because you know they're going to bring Thrawn in and he ain't going to be the right shade of blue. People are going to get that hexacode and be like, what the fuck? He ain't not... this specific blue. I am so going to hit my wall uh, whenever Thrawn comes around and we just have to deal with the same discourse. Mm-hmm. But yeah, that's a nice place to end it off. You've got uh, an hour and 25 minutes out of that. I think so, that's great. I'll mm, take that. Mm. So, closing thoughts. It's um, it's okay. It's I, good. I, I have it's, watched it It's all. quite good. I, I have watched it all again since. And I, I, I'll be honest, I, I enjoyed it more than I did watching it week to week. I think it works better as... A whole i think it's got a better flow to it because it's I've the changed... whole story like again those are one of those very situational like it's it's good because you know what's happening now <laughs> i mean yeah it's that's yeah that's fair but it's but then that you just get around to the argument of you know some shows are built for weekly some shows aren't that's true no you, you can't the, the conversation for Book of Boba Fett is, oh, it's Wednesday, an episode happened. Wait, in a week. Oh, no, a black man spun around the circle. People in have talked week. about that longer than they have talked about the actual show. I am so unsurprised, but still deeply disappointed by that. Mm. So, yeah, I definitely would have changed some stuff. Not even, like, what's in the show, just... Move structure pieces. everything that they have in this show is good just change maybe take some certain thing like the train the, the that whole train thing irrelevant apart from introducing the pikes it has no reason to exist and you can introduce the pikes some other way but i would disagree i think it shows how boba and the tuscan tribe have grown to work together and trust each other. I think that the I, I think Heist you've already Darium done that is... with the the spy kids Clash of Titans and Gora moment. No, I mean that that's him like proving to them that he is like that's their first moment of bonding. That's that 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 is the first. Yeah, but I of... feel like that's enough. Ah, I disagree. If you if you have if you have that start a level of trust, you can do other things to build it up from there. The the train scene, it might be a case of if it was just wasn't as long and as boring as it was for me, it might be a different case. But that shit was dull. I was like, what the hell am I watching? But yeah. Rejigger some stuff. Maybe a few one or two choices. Um and I think you've had a really good show as it stands, as it's just Purely, it's not the worst thing I've ever seen in my life. By far. But it's just a solid... It's a solid myth for me. And Until I... they do something with it, like post, like Manda season three, you get Bubba back and something's happened. I don't know. I feel that. I feel that. I think it was quite good. I like the direction it's going in, and I think there is a lot to mine from this story uh, that uh, harkens back to the classic themes and motifs of Star Wars. Hmm? No, I, I do like where they left Bubba, though. I, I like the character development they gave him, despite everything. He's, it's nice that he actually has a character now. Exactly. Hmm. I also he has a, hot, a character, it might be and a then they take. developed it on top of it. It might be a hot take. I think he's he's the best he's ever looked. I concur. The slightly darker green and the red, the the black. It's it's not as baggy anymore. 
It's just like, no. That's an action figure I'm absolutely going to buy. Before, it's just like, eh, he looks fine. He looks cool. Yeah. I don't need to own it. Now it's like, I absolutely need to own it. Just so I can have the knee up. Because that I knee agree. was fantastic. I agree. Like I said, it's that like work, bitch. <laughs> So, yeah, thank you for joining, Jared. Thank everyone for listening. I oh, do my appreciate pleasure it. as always. And, uh, yeah, I'm sure we'll we'll do this again sometime soon. Oh, absolutely. I will be back the moment you'll have me. What is the next? Is it? It's, Ma- it's not Mandalorian, is it? It's Moon Knight. I've got me M's confused. Oh, yeah, Moon Knight's next. But mm. I don't care about anything. I... Much like Darth Maul, want Kenobi. Yeah, I I, I had a, a trip with Kenobi. No, I'm not gonna do it. I'm so bad. I'm gonna... I had a trip with no, that It's microphone. like May Fourth was right there. Why didn't you do this? Like, oh, it's the twenty fifth. It's fine. Yes, yeah, cool. I get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Though um, I do find it hilarious. He's supposed to be hiding out, yet he's walking in the sand dunes with a, a lightsaber out. Ah, it's, it's, cool. <laughs> it's conspicuous. He's in high. It looks cool. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we got Kenobi, we have got Moon Knight. We will absolutely be continuing the tradition we have started. My honor, it's my pleasure to do so. You'll be on for Moon Knight. Not Bubba. Huh? Wow. Ah, I like. Listen, I have a very it's limited. No, it's, of it's, people. it's fine. I could, it's fine. It's I fine. have a limited number of people I can it's have fine. on for comic book stuff. It's fine. The, 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 street, the street class of the year, it's fine. I, I get it. I get it. Yo, you, it's still going because you'll be on the <laughs> other stuff. This is a Marvel agreement, sweetheart. Not st- <laughs> it's, it's, to- it's totally fine. It's totally fine. I'm, All right. I am. Um, I understand. Don't you worry. Anyway. So, yeah. Um, it'll probably be. Moon Knight when Moon Knight's so far away. I mean, you'll, you'll probably end up on for like the Batman, honestly. But I mean, I got to figure out when I'm seeing the Batman first. Like, I already got my tickets for the Batman. Ugh, I don't. I I'll be honest. I haven't even looked. No. I only found out tickets dropped because people went. I got my ticket. It's like okay. I didn't. I didn't know it dropped. But... Well, I, I tell you, like, I didn't. I knew exactly when it dropped. I just forgot. So. Yeah, we'll catch you all next time, Moon Knight, whenever. So, bye-bye.